and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Shall send my angel before me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. John the Baptist is one of the most fascinating people the world has ever seen. He was still in his mother's womb, and yet he acknowledged the Savior of the world at the visitation. His mother was elderly and beyond the age of bringing forth children, the natural age, yet God's timetable was different. St. Elizabeth brought forth a son, and what a son. The miraculous conceptions because of her old age and his special birth causing the inhabitants of Ein Karim, as mentioned in the Gospel, to marvel, saying, if events of this magnitude occurred at his entrance into the world, what would his life be like? St. Elizabeth never doubted, but Zachary the priest did. An angel reassured him, but that wasn't enough for him. God punished his incredulity with the loss of the faculty of speech, and it was restored after he protested John is his name. In other words, we do what God asks and we follow his directions. There's no reason to doubt God cares for us and loves us. Since Jesus was St. John the Baptist's cousin, Mary was his aunt and St. Joseph his uncle. His mother Elizabeth is a canonized saint. I was able to visit the Franciscan Church of the Visitation in the Holy Land and has a magnificent painting of St. John the Baptist's birth. Near the church is a well where St. John was lowered to hide him when Herod's troops came to massacre the Holy Innocents. So God could have worked in a miracle and you know just made him invisible or whatever, but the same with Christ. He went to Egypt, and so God wants us to use natural means, not extraordinary ones. Ein Krim is one of the most beautiful places in the Holy Land. Tree-covered hills, high elevation and lush vegetation, it's like an oasis in the midst of the Judean desert, which is very near. Yeah, that was to be St. John the Baptist's lot, to dwell among lions, hyenas, and scorpions. His sanctity is ethereal. None of us could ever have been like him. It's incredible. But his love of God so consumed his entire being that clothed in a camel skin tunic with a diet of locust and honey. The solitude was the desert, barren wasteland, but that was home for him. St. John's work is astounding to prepare the chosen people in the world itself for the long-awaited Messiah. Gathering a band of men, many of whom later became apostles, he preached repentance and prayer. He had a baptism of water, which was symbolic of being sorry for your sins. It's not a sacrament, but it was to prefigure baptism and sorrow for sin. For the scribes and Pharisees were in an uproar. Who is this supposed leader? They were supposed to be the role models. They were shocked. Who is this intruder? He didn't even ask their permission. Do penance, why? Show sorrow for sin? They weren't concerned. But it's amazing the contrast between the two. The humility and the holiness of St. John the Baptist and the arrogance and self-righteousness of the Pharisees is striking. The success of Jesus preaching, because being open to grace is something very special. Not everyone is receptive. It was very much dependent on John preparing the soil. Hardened sinners repented. Others turned to prayer. Some turned their focus from worldly 
militant Messiah to one who would save them from their sins. Yet John was fearless. He rebuked the Pharisees, but he did it in a humble manner. Even Herod loved to listen to him, although he was eventually beheaded for condemning Herod's adulterous relationship. He never ceased promoting the glory of God. St. John wanted his followers to listen and follow Jesus. He was the precursor. Jesus was the Messiah. It was difficult at first because many were attached to the saintly Baptist. They wanted to stay with him. Jesus was new on the scene and they weren't sure at first. So, as Jesus came by the Jordan, St. John pointed to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who taketh away the sins of the world. And we still use that at Mass. And what a magnificent, picturesque appellation. A gentle Lamb, the Son of God. While in prison, He sent His disciples to Jesus because they were incredulous at the time. And they witnessed His miracles. Our Lord restoring sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, caring paralytics, and the numerous conversions. St. John the Baptist is mentioned frequently at Mass. The Confidior, there's a Susha Pe Sante Trinitas after the Offertory, and then also he is the first saint mentioned after the commemoration of the dead. But it doesn't have Baptist, it just has John. As the religious brothers and sisters now are making a retreat, what greater model of virtue could be found. St. John the Baptist practiced all the virtues in an eminent degree. Humility, patience, faith, hope, charity, purity, and fortitude. Holy Mother Church places him before St. Joseph in the Litany of the Saints. That used to bother me. I like St. Joseph a lot. That's the name of our church and it's He's very important. But I started thinking about it, and it's like arguing about which star is more radiant or which priceless diamond is more brilliant. Both of them are amazing saints. They're both great friends. They can be our friend too if we pray to them. Their intercession is very powerful because of their close relationship with Jesus and Mary.